So before we do get started, anyone had any like uh, overall questions or comments? I I just uh, was uh, telling Robert that uh, I only got really through half of the chapter. I ended up finishing on. Um, well, I mean, I'm going to talk about issues related to um, up to like page 30. So almost, I guess this, yeah. So um, I don't know, like, I just, I wasn't going to be able to like get, um, work has been crazy. So I don't know if you want to take this like to, to into next week, chapter two, because it is kind of foundational or um, if you want to just, I don't know. So, I mean, I, you've done this before, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, I, only like one other time, but I, oh. we can take it the next week, and I'm, I think we should do that. Um, if you're not, if you, if, oh, you, you know, if there's more to say, and you are you willing to to continue on next sure. week and finish the chapter? Yeah, 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 yeah. Robert, do you have any objection to that? No, no. I, I like I was telling Ryan, like this is a big, big chapter, <laughs> a lot of stuff I to know cover. So cohort yeah. one somehow uh, sped through it, but <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, wow. I mean, how are we going to get through? I mean, we should probably talk about. Um, we don't have to, in other book clubs, they don't usually spend a lot of time. They don't go through all the exercises, but they like to take a look at least a couple of them, too, yeah. as well. So yeah, we can, I'm, I'm, open to, I'm open to talking about if you got any specific ones. I, I, my, a lot of, I mean, I just have slides just to keep, because I'm very tangential mentally. So right now, I, okay. I've been working too much. So um, a lot of it is just things that I co copy and paste from the book just to kind of bring to attention. But yeah, if there's like examples and stuff i'm i'm interested in working yeah through. there's some exercises in the back i mean when you get to the end of the chapter there's some exercises there and like you may want to pick a few that your favorite ones or whatever you think are the most mm -hmm. um yeah educational uh in your opinion um yeah yeah i mean i particularly uh, like the simulation ones that they had at the very end for example i think those are really uh, illuminating right they really help you understand the product what you're doing a lot better it's like oh yeah when I mean, they did it in the yeah. book but then when you do it yourself, you, you really get stuck in your head. So it's worth doing. Yeah. For sure. All right. So I'm going to expand the calendar. Okay. Part two. And then I'll just, just go ahead and spam it and I'll just get started. Because I do have to leave like a little bit early today. I got another meeting at. Okay. Uh, go for it. Yeah. Go, it'll go be ahead one my time. I don't know where y'all are at, but I'm on your yeah, post, so. yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, <laughs> all right. So obviously this chap chapter, as I mentioned, is sort of foundational. I'm just going to kind of. I mean, I guess this is a presentation. Um, it's mostly just to kind of like lay out, as I said, you know, sort of the um, just the main themes of the of the half of the chapter that I kind of got into. Um, first of all, actually, I didn't do this last week, but there there was that quiz in chapter one about like you know how would how would you think about this? And, you know, are you a frequentist or a Bayesian? I actually ended up did taking it after I'm fully a frequentist just because I've spent most of my adult life thinking that way. And so, yeah, there is like a very much of a retraining aspect um, to this. Here's an exercise, actually, I did drop this in here. So um, the whole articles as real versus fake, and they kind of lay out like, you know, this whole idea of what our prior assumption, you know, model is for, you know, what kinds of, you know, probability of seeing a, a real or a fake article is. And then we have, some experiences and then we have some posteriors so without looking at your book oh crap i just <laughs> screwed it up damn it i had it all figured out well shit all right well forgive me um i, I was just trying to like um i just put my finger right next to the little arrow key well i guess you guys know now that um i, I kind of like the way that you know one of the things that i like about this is i mean obviously there's a lot of logic and there's a lot of math but it's also a lot of it is about sort of I mean, I, I, I don't know, like for me, like, I'm, I'll talk about the symbols and whatnot, but for me, I, I really like examples of, you know, fake articles and exclamation points or, or you know, um, I mean, some of the examples they gave, I don't know, I, I, I mean, like, the, the, uh, the, the deep blue one was a little bit less, I didn't, I didn't yeah, I don't know, I didn't fully understand that. Um, but anyway, the, the, po the point here is, is, you know, the, um, you know, after all the experiences they refer to in the chap in the beginning of the chapter, you know, it's like um, there's this sort of thinking about pop all kinds of possible worlds, right? Where you know, even though um, you know, we see this sort of um, 
the article is fake jumps from 40 to 90 percent um but there's uh you know there's there's definitely um kind of a base rate issue here right if only 40 percent of articles are fake right so that's something that can we keep in our mind of and that's my background is actually psychology. This is one of the things humans aren't great at is kind of estimating probabilities based on, you know, a couple pieces of information, right? So it's easy to see why, you know, we might have somebody who um, overestimates this relationship just based on, you know, a couple pieces of information. Um, but the, you know, the things like I really focused on, these are all things coming from the chapter, obviously, you know, the sort of this basic issue of prior versus posterior. This is you know, probably the foundation, one of the foundational issues of being a Bayesian versus a frequent distance. You know, um, the only prior that frequentists bring to the table that I'm aware of is, you know, there's nothing going on here, right? We call it the null hypothesis, right? This is our sort of, you know, in a way, like what our kind of assumption is, I guess it's not really a prior, but it is something that we're, you know, using as a sort of um, stand-in, I guess, but whatever. It's, this is a very different way of thinking about, um, you know, tests and about trying to come up with some kind of inference about what is going on here. Um, and so for me, actually, since I haven't really done anything like this in a while, like a lot of the um, terminology and like, you know, the symbology and stuff like that, where it was, something that I, you know, I had to do it, read it a couple of times. Um, so forgive me. And if anyone has any, if I miss anything here, please kick in. One thing I do want to mention, and this is someone who does stuff with, you know, a lot of social science type, you know, things, this is focused on events, right? So um, not everything we do in research is about predicting events. I mean, you know, sometimes we want to classify things, or sometimes we want to predict events, but Sometimes we do, we want to predict someone's score on a test. You know what I mean? That that's not a yes or no answer, right? It's a there's a lot of potentially potential um, answers to that question. On if we have a bunch of information for somebody, but it's not necessarily just going to be a pass or fail or event or non-event kind of situation. But for now, I think this really serves us as readers. Um, but you know, I, I'd like yeah, to, I think what they're trying to do is they want to introduce it with the easier case of events, and then sure. yeah. then they immediately you know they go into the random variables in the in the next section yeah. of this chapter. Yeah. So um, anyway, just something that kind of came to mind. Um, you know, conditional probability is something I talk we talk about a lot in in research. You know, you know we you know we condition on you know a bunch of different. You know, covariates to try to figure out you know what's the what's the probability of a, of a certain event happening and um yeah oh thanks stop clicking buttons um so anyway <laughs> yeah the the, uh, the 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 probability of a given b so yeah i mean i i i think that's the way they say it in in the um the book though so i always say the, the straight line is given right and that's what they I believe said so um you know that they give a lot of basic examples of you know um because we have this sort of uh tied event you know we have flu given whether or not we washed our hands uh you know this is going to be a different probability than just having the flu overall there's uh, this we're conditioning on whether or not someone washes their hands or wears a mask or does whatever um that's going to have some influence on the overall probability of the event that we're concerned with. Another thing that, you know, this comes up a lot in, in actually in psychology a lot. A lot of times people think that, you know, probability or conditional relationships go both ways. They do not, right? So, you know, probability of giving, getting the flu given we washed our hands is not the same as saying the probability of washing our hands given that we have the flu, right? There's this two very different relationships. Um, Another thing they, that he mentions, or they mention in the book, uh, that is sort of a um, contrast to this idea of conditional probability is this idea of independent events. So, you know, if the probability of A given B is just the same as the probability of A, um, A and B aren't related, and you know we can move on with our explorations of what's going on with A without our friend B. Um, 
but anyway, these are just important things I think to really focus on. Another thing that I, I'll be honest, like I had completely forgotten about this whole idea of what the little C meant from my, you know, logic from college, you know, decades ago, right? So um, I had always said um, B compliments or whatever the letter was. I was not aware of someone saying B not. Has either of you heard of that before? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like I like the notation more of like it's um. I don't know, kind of like drawing this a weird little line. I don't know how to describe it. Um, I, I like using that notation more do you, than compliment. Do you like saying be not or be compliment? I guess is my uh, Be not, be not. Yeah, I'm really? a be not. Okay. Yeah. Actually, actually, uh, <laughs> that's growing on me now because I, yeah. I, I, uh, I, had, I had mostly heard compliment. But, yeah, because I, yeah. I feel like compliment just like, I don't know, like I get what it's meaning. I just feel like it's sort of, like I think about like, okay, what's the probability of like this event not happening, right? Rather like the compliment of this, it feels like just weird. Um, yeah, like, it's, it's like they're related, but, the, um, but I mean, I guess they are related, but really it's the opposite of whatever yeah. it is. So yeah, you're right, be not is better. And then- Compliment um, is a set terminology, right? It's from set yeah, theory stuff. Set, set theory. Um, and what would you guys call this symbol? I mean, I think we, we didn't know, but- um, well, I always call it and, but I'm sure it's yeah. really supposed to be the intersection symbol, but yeah, there, right? Yeah, right. I also say and. <laughs> and, yeah, and, or in, you know, intersection of the two. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Um, in fact, I write an ampersand most of the time and don't use that intersection symbol, though. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just an, it, basically, it's just an and, and, uh, you know, and this is all taken from the book. Those that are fake and use, um, Exclamation points are denoted by um, a and or intersection B, whatever. Um, so I also had to remind myself just in the examples what A and what B were in terms of the original example because I would get, I would yes. read and then I would be like, um, B is exclamation points, right? And then I would get confused because I, you know, I get turned around. So um, anyway, I'm sure we all have, you know, that sort of. Um, but yeah, basically this idea of um, joint probability, uh, um, you know, as well as conditioning, you know, probability, these are all things that I, I what little experience I have with this field, um, the Bayesian stuff is, is um, the thing I uh, recognize pretty quickly that we're going to have to get our minds around it. And then, um, uh, you know, uh, if I could jump over just a second, sure, one observation. Yes, I please. had that exact same issue with all with these examples where they kept using a and b and like i just i when i when i do when i do the exercise i just write what the thing is it's like i'll pipe yeah. p exclamation point given given fake yeah. or something like yeah. that and why do you need to make a and b so confused to me? and then like they sometimes like <laughs> then they change i remember in the uh like the chess example with the yeah. ibm blue then it's like pi and then there's like a and i'm like i <laughs> just tell me what this is i have to like yeah. you know double back and keep reading <laughs> so you're not the yeah. yeah you know i guess Clearly, you're not the only one that had trouble with that aspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I, and also, like, I just, you know, finding some of these symbols and stuff. Yeah. I don't know how mathematicians and logicians do this stuff. So, um, and then also, um, there was this, you know, sort of, they, they mentioned this idea of total probability, which, you know, this is a, a big difference between, um, you know, probability and, and likelihood, which I have a slide in there in here somewhere about that, but, you know, probabilities always have to sum to one, right? I mean, otherwise you got a problem, right? There's some unknown event or some possible sub event or grouping of events that we are not addressing. Um, so yeah, typically my experience, you know, with little experience I have with this, that you know, the total probability ends up being sort of a, a thing um okay yeah so um if i i want to just point out yes. one thing with the total probability that that's something you want to remember because you're going to use that a lot yeah um right. in this thing i've noticed like to calculate the basically calculating the denominator for a lot of these Bayes rules things you'll you'll use that total probability thing to break it down because you'll yeah. p, p of b will be the you know probability that the event happens in any way whatsoever and then you basically yeah. adding up all the ways it could have happened right uh to get that denominator yeah. it's like p P, um, you know, and B uh, is just a little, a little, you know, group, and then P, you know, compliment, or excuse me, A, um, or, or, excuse me, A not, 
um, and yeah. B is like a universe. You know, that's like a whole bunch of things that you know, it's a bunch of non A's that are. But you know, it could be, and it often is like not just A and A complement, but A, B, C, D, and E that all add up to all the possible ways, right? Yeah, um, yeah. That's probably not the best way to say, it, but you know what I mean. So this, yeah. I just want to point out that that's an important thing you know you'll need that a lot except instead of using you'll use the other thing too instead of using p a and b you'll actually use p a given b times the probability b which is the other way of writing that right yeah yeah so, and then that to be your denominator and your base rules like over and over and over again yeah um anyway i didn't want to interrupt but i just want to make that no there's just some to highlight I, the, I only got a, a few more slides so um i just wanted to highlight how important that particular thing no I, is. yeah i agree um yeah, and in fact, like probably, well, let's, let's, let's come back to that. Yeah, okay. so uh, this is something I, I mean, I, I do this for a living, and I still find myself um, screwing up this sometimes. But like, um, I don't know if you guys ever like watch Stat Quest videos. Do you ever watch, you know, those? Probably, yeah. I love those videos. Um, no, I would like to watch them though. Maybe, he does. Maybe he does a great job of um, differentiating probability versus like not just in it for like Bayesians, but for, for anything. Yeah, he's got, I don't know, I forget the guy who does it, he's really great. Um, so, right, I, I looked um, some of this up, you know, not just in the book, but yeah, so another way of saying probability is the chance that um, a particular event or outcome occurs based, you know, given a model, right? So another way of saying model, what would be in, in the book, what would it be another way of saying model in, in this chapter? Like what's, you know, the thing that we're starting with? Our prior, like our prior, prior right? I mean, that's yeah. like, you know, we, we start with that and then we, you know, we, we, um, well, obviously the model can, can change and we, you know, that's um, something. And then likelihood is, you know, this idea of we have data, you know, um, how likely is, you know, the, the data that we have, you know, to, going to fit with the, the, the model, the parameters that we've sort of invested in, right? So um, another way, like uh, this statology website, I think is what it's called. Um, you know, they had some great examples that I think illustrate this with coins, because you know, God forbid we not have a probability discussion without talking about flipping coins. You know, it's always helpful. Um, wait till next chapter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So suppose we have a coin that's assumed to be fair, right? So um, if we flip the coin uh, one time, the probability that it lands on heads is 0.5, right? So. By the way, um, where is the model in um, that sentence? Can anybody guess? Mm. Would it just be like the coin flips, like the coin flip itself? Like, well, no, like our prior that's data, that's the, 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 our that, prior, that, like. Right, but so what's our okay. prior though here? The assumption that it's fair, so. Yeah, so it's the okay. assumption that, you know, we should, you know, that this, you know, we should get this 50, 50, you know, split. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, an assumption that is, you know, may, may or may not be um, sustainable. Um, okay, so then the next example that they gave that I liked was, now suppose we flip the coin 100 times and only lands on head 17 times. We would say that the likelihood that the coin is fair is quite low. Now notice how we're not talking about events. We're talking about the underlying model, which is the assumption that the coin is indeed fair, right? So, um, yeah, this is one of the things that the, the guy, Josh Starmer from um, uh, StackQuest, he always, you know, talks about like, you know, probability is, um, you know, uh, how well does, yeah, I'm probably gonna mix this up, but how well does our um, model fit the data, right? Um, whereas likelihood is saying how well, um, does the data fit the sort of the model that we've constructed, right? This is, you know, what maximum likelihood we're doing. We're trying to find, you know, the best um, best degree. Like, you know, given what we have in the data, what are the, what you know what parameters, you know, are we? Yeah, like which uh, the way I always say it or think about it is which which parameters are most consistent with the data. I yeah. think is what I, something like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, yeah, this is pretty basic, but I, I'll probably screw this up. My, I mean, I still, you know, just as a, as a folk, you know, uh, person, like I, you know, I mix up likelihood and probability all the time. 
and um, I mean, I mean, I say likelihood when I should say probability is what I mean. You know, just oh yeah, common, sure. Like we all common, in, uh, in, common. in all likelihood, in all likelihood, we all do that. In all likelihood, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really likely that you know, I, 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 I say likelihood a lot, or likely when it's really probable or probability, you know, probability issue. So yeah, a um, couple other things that I thought were interesting were. Um, so, you know, like there's a couple of times where they have these nice, like seminal sort of sentences or whatever. Um, the Bayes rules requires three pieces of information, the prior, which is our model, right? The likelihood, which we just kind of went over and a normalizing constant without looking at the book. Can, it, can, you, can any of you in your words, because I'll be honest, like, I think I understand this, but I also kind of don't think I understand it. So what, what does the, the normalizing constant do? It's basically that total probability we were just talking about. It is the normalizing constant. Um, so yeah. it just, the point of calling it a normalizing constant, is like, it's really, all you have to do is just sum up all the possible ways. Like I said, you had the prior times the likelihood, that's not a probability. It, but to make it a probability, we just normalize it. And we, to right. do that, we need to count the normal, normalizing constant. And the reason why I think that's so important is you'll see, this is where the numerical methods actually come in to calculate the stupid normalizing constant. That's, you can write down the posterior, mm -hmm. A proportional oh here's the here's the, the proportional uh I'm trying to say you can write down a expression a closed form expression almost all the time uh for what the posterior looks like the right but not the normalizing constant which you absolutely do need to be able to get turned into a probability and that's where the monte carlo markov chains and all these things come in yeah i, I guess one of the things that helped me was thinking about that's not a very succinct way of saying it. <laughs> no sorry i'm me. i don't, I don't have, I have nothing better but, that it, but it's just like it. is it just essentially like we're taking all like we're taking all of like the ways that the like this event or events could happen and then we're weighting that essentially yes. we're using exactly, that as yeah. a denominator okay. to say okay, okay. This to is... turn these weights into probabilities essentially right yeah right right yeah and that's the key uh, bayesian part of this whole thing like you were just using that coin flipping example right and you were given almost a frequentist kind of point of view it's like oh we assume it's fair we do this experiment and see if that hypothesis holds or not whereas a bayesian would say no i'm going to assume uh prior on my probability from zero to one, maybe I assume it's uniform, maybe I assume it's got some peaky shape to it or whatever. If I don't know anything about the coin, maybe I just do assume yeah. it's uniform. It's, it could be anything from zero to one, right? And then I use the uh, binomial uh, probability distribution because I you know, flip the coin 17 times with unknown P, right? Now I can, now that's my posterior, but it's not normalized. I have to renormalize it. And if you do that, you actually end up with this beta distribution, which is the whole next chapter is going to cover all this. Make, yeah, I think I that's the yeah. great thing about the beta binomial thing. It really gives you a nice concrete. It's the, everybody does it example that you can always have in the back. I always have in the back of my mind when I think about these Bayesian things, it's like, I always think about beta binomial because it's the one thing I can always pull out of my, and it's a, it's a it, nice case because you don't need the numerical things to, to calculate that normalizing constant. You can just do the integrals. Wow. Yeah. I can't, but they can be done. <laughs> They've been <Yeah>. done. <laughs> yeah, I, and I've read beta binomial stuff a little bit, but yeah, I'm actually kind of glad we're gonna. Go. I need. I, I, I um, this book is a little bit denser. I, I I'm, I'll be glad to have an extra week to uh, refresh on this stuff before we get into like the nitty gritties. But yeah, and so then I guess really the, the one, couple last things that I, I think this is, yeah this is my last one. Um, just like, you know, I, I, these are kind of like formulas that, you know, I've taken classes on like probability or, you know, Bayesian rules, which I've, you know, taken some online things over the years, a decade ago, maybe, or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, this uh, particular sort of, uh, uh, ooh, oh, just, I'm, I'm trying to point at this here. I don't know if this will help uh, me, but. Uh, yeah, well, okay. we see you pointing at it. Yeah, yeah there you go. All right, so. Um, I kind of like this because it kind of wraps everything up, right? So we're, the goal of this sequence is to tell what's the probability of B given A, and you know, there's different ways we can write this out. But this idea of, you know, I, I put the uh, little multiplication sign because I just was like, I want to make sure it's really visible, like what we're trying to do here, sorry. Um, so the probability of B times uh, the likelihood of B uh, given A uh, divided by the probability of A, right? So going back to our fake, um, you know news stories or whatever so if we're trying to figure out probability of you know a fake news story b was the fake news story yes and the a was the exclamation right so probability of a, something being a fake news story given you know something we know about the, the use of exclamation points is just the probability of um the, the having a fake story which i think is like 40 percent or whatever you know for some point and then 
Um, oh, and then, yeah, how do we how do we calculate the likelihood of B given A? Well, it's just the reversal of, of um, the relationship and that gives us probability. Um, I, think, I don't think I knew that for some reason. I don't know why, but once again, I, this is why I'm here. I need to- smart I don't, I still don't, I guess, that's like one part in the chapter where I'm like, I still don't fully get it. Like the likelihood of B given A is equal to the conditional probability of, you know, A and B. A and I given just, B. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I guess I can't just like fully under, like wrap my head around like why. Isn't it just that's a the definition? Case. Yeah, no, but it's like, I think for me, and I, I maybe Robert is having this experience, like there's something intuitive about probability because we've been doing it our whole lives, right? And so I think it's just really hard to turn it around, right? And and um, and kind of think about, you know. The, yeah, because because now it seems like there's like a much more closer like like a correspondence, right? With like I guess the equal sign might be throwing me off because at least the one base class I took in undergrad. Um, mm -hmm. It just made it seem like, you know, the like probability and likelihood were, you know, related, but they're like fairly separate. Whereas like this makes it seem like like the likelihood is really just the conditional probability. I'm like, I just, it's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it'll get better, I think, as we, you know, yeah. practice. But um, yeah. So yeah, that's a, I mean, it's, it was, you're right. It is definitional. And I, I do realize I misspelled likelihood here too. So that's buggy me now. But, whatever um um so Wiggins looks right to me wait a minute oh never mind yeah sorry i thought i, I did um uh yeah I, I did not never mind i thought i did um so yeah but i guess what i liked was this is what they kind of started with with this damn it, um this whole prior times the likelihood uh so our prior is you know just you know the, the, you know, we don't know anything about exclamation points when we started this, right? Presumably. And so our prior is just like, what's, what do we know about the probability of fake articles? Well, previous research has shown 40% or something like that, right? Well, that's where we're starting. We then take the likelihood based on some math and then we divide it by the total probability of, of um, us seeing a, uh, a, or a exclamation point. I don't even remember what the damn conditioning thing was I keep forgetting so um and anyway so yeah this this idea of the normalizing constant is like to, to uh Ronald's point about like you know this idea of um you gotta do something to put it on a you know in the denominator something to kind of give you the uh the probability otherwise you're you're stuck so that's all I have I wish I had more but some um what do y'all think about Anything else I'm missing? Because I mean, this is only the first, um, I don't know, uh, 15 or 20 pages, I guess. But um, what were the other things that were of interest? So the next section is the, uh, so you'll pick up with the probability of uh, random Basing them off of random variables and maybe pick one exercise maybe for next time to, to wrap yeah, it up, you think? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, no. Is there I, any uh, of the exercises? Maybe we could talk about one of the exercises now that this has to do with um, not variables. Yeah, so if you're looking at like page 45 or 44, 43 ish. Yeah. Uh, um, just for fun. Just because we have time. Yeah, Unless somebody no, else has some other ideas. No, no. Good. What about exercise 2.1? Yeah. Can you put that on your screen? Um, maybe. Um, do I, wait a minute. Where did I? Oh, yeah. One way to be safe is like stop sharing and then restart sharing. That way you can be sure you're not going to show something you don't want to show. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> I don't have anything. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have anything. Like, but yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure there's all just kinds. case you had you like your stock portfolio open another window or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. That's close. But I don't see any tears running down your cheeks, so I assume that's not the case. Oh, no. <laughs> I am uh, okay. Wait, oh, yeah, sorry. So, exercises, yes, I probably okay. So, 
For each scenario below, you'll be given uh, a pair a pair of events A and B. Explain um, what you believe to be the relationship between the posterior and prior probabilities of B. So um, A, as you've just finished reading Lambda Literary Award-winning author Nicole Dennis Ben's first novel, and you enjoyed it. B, as you also enjoy, um, you you will also enjoy. Oh, excuse me, first novel. And so the newest novel is 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 B, right? So will we like the newest novel given that we liked the the, the first, right? Um, so let's let's think about this. Is it is it that um, the probability of enjoying the um, prob uh, the the newest novel given that we enjoyed the first is greater than the probability of um, enjoying the um, newest? Think about like what what conditioning does for us here. So, I mean, to me, I would say I, that the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to say yes. Um, yeah, well, actually, mm, you enjoyed What's it. the probability of, of, yeah. of, of, of B? Um, Given A. Well, no, of B, the periods, old. right? Um, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I would say yes, that the probability of B given A would be greater than probability of B because you, we already know that we enjoy Nicole Dennis Ben's first novel. So we, you'd kind of assume that maybe you like the author, maybe you like her writing style, and then maybe you didn't, you maybe enjoy the newest novel more. Yeah, I mean, so if you enjoy, enjoyed it, yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's certainly is something to condition, um, you know, whether they person enjoyed the, the, the newest. What do you, what do you think, uh, Ronald? No, I agree. I mean, the, the prior, whatever the prior is for probably I would enjoy the second novel. I would say the posterior is going to be a bigger probability because I did enjoy the first one. Right. So yeah, that improved my, it improved my likelihood or uh, see, <laughs> 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 improved my probability of liking the second novel <laughs> since I like the first one. <laughs> yeah. Increase. Um, well, let me, let me, throw maybe a monkey wrench into this okay so like sure, sure so the probability of b given a is well i don't know actually i guess so maybe i'm wrong about this but so like the probability of b given a so like that's a subset of a events right there's a bunch of non-a you know events as it relates to b so why wouldn't there be a bunch of more, you know, be given uh, not a um, sort of, I don't know, I mean, that's what, maybe I'm wrong thinking about this, but like, um, shouldn't there just be more probably, you know, the, shouldn't the probability of liking her book, ugh, this is why I need this group so um, Okay, let's, let's work on the second one. I don't, yeah. Um, so it's zero degrees for A is it's zero degrees Fahrenheit in Minnesota on a January day, and B is it will be 60 degrees tomorrow, right? So uh, given um, that it's today or on on you know in a January day it's zero degrees, um, what's the um, given that what what's the probability that it's 60 degrees tomorrow? So, so in this case, the data that it's almost free, it's freezing in Minnesota uh, would tell me that it's very unlikely to be yeah. 60 degrees tomorrow, right? So I would say that before I knew that, I might have thought it was somewhat likely to be 60 degrees. And now that I know it's freezing, I think it's unlikely. So it's a second P, yeah. P given A is less than P of B. Is what yeah. I say that. Yeah. Yeah. And no, that one yeah. I agree with. Yeah. Yeah. Because so it would um, be like pretty unlikely that it would be uh, such a rapid... Is it like right. a large change in temperature? Um, Pretty large, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> the authors only got three hours of sleep last night. 
um, and then the authors make several typos in their um, writing uh, today. So given that they only slept three hours, this feels like my work life right now, actually. Um, <laughs> so they only slept three hours uh, last night. Um, what's the probability that they make several typos, right? Um, once again, like, you know, there's a bunch of like, I, I don't know, I, I got to think about this more, but there's a bunch of um, not A's, you know, conditioning um, that B event that may, you know, there may be a bunch of not A's that are even more deleterious than the three hours of sleep, right? So I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm maybe I'm just trying to find fault here or something. No, like, you're actually what you're thinking, you're actually thinking along the right lines, I think, it's just you gotta remember that it's not just P of B, think of that law of total probability, right? P of B is P of B given A times P of B, P times yeah. P of A, plus P of B given not A times P of not A. So you got to think of all the, yeah. the, uh, the you yeah, know, you I think mean, of I guess, the full guess, thing. Like, yeah. I thought I you're thinking like a, you have like a Venn diagram in your brain. I'm thinking you're like, wait a minute, there's more of this. How could this be less? <laughs> or yeah, less I think this? the more? presumption <laughs> I think that you want to do is you want to say that the probability of B is, you know, so like in the case of um, sleep thing, it's like you're, you're assuming that like probability of B by itself contains a bunch of different not A's, right? So there could be people that slept even less. There's also people that slept a lot, you know, and so uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, the assumption would be that the, it would be the first one, right? It would be the probability yeah. of B given A is greater than the probability of B. Um, okay, how about this? Um, um, marginal, yeah. conditional, or joint? Actually, can, can one of you define like marginal versus conditional? Because that was another one that like, I, I mean, I use this all the time, like talk about marginal models and mixed effects and stuff like that. But like, what, how would you all define marginal and how is it different than conditional in your mind? It's marginal just like a, an event. That's also something that I was a little bit confused about um, as well. Because at least maybe my thought process was that it would just be like, say the probability yeah the probability of a the probability of b would that be like the marginal probability or am i just totally off that's how i see it yeah so the marginal probability is just like the the total probability of b you know for all possible a's i guess you would say yeah um, integrated over those is what i'm thinking about when i think about the marginalizing you're usually doing a sum or an integral sometime but um to get to uh, on the joint distribution, right? Yeah, I mean, but, so this is a common thing that we, I mean, like the way I think about marginal stuff is like, okay, so like a lot of times like in this is not Bayesian, and this is just, you know, doing any old models, right? So you, you, um, you, know, you have a bunch of covariates, right? And so you're trying to say something about this intervention um, and you're, you're, you're trying to like say something about the intervention while controlling for a bunch of different values in a covariate, right? So across all ranges of some, you know, test score that may be relevant, um, the effect of, you know, A is, or excuse me, whatever, um, yeah, this, whatever the, the thing is that we're trying to look at the marginal effect. So it's like you're kind of controlling for, by, by looking at a, a, at a wide range of, of, of options for, um, you know, the, to, to hold steady for the, um, the marginal effects. But yeah, so, okay, so let's, um, for each of these specify using probability notation, we will not be doing that. Uh, so is this a marginal, conditional, or joint probability? 73% of people that drive 10 miles um, per hour above the speed limit get a speeding ticket. Is this a marginal, Oops. conditional, or joint probability? This is a good one. I think I lost the section. Yeah, I'm sorry that drive 10 miles per hour. Uh, I, would, kind of a, I, do, I was thinking marginal. So what is what is the thing that we're, um, you know, what is the... Oh, actually, uh, actually, would it be... I would say conditional. Actually, joint. 
Oh, see, I, now I was, th- I was going to join, but his condition yeah. says what you know, seventh pe- of the people of the people that given that you drive 10 miles an hour by the speed limit, what's the probability you get a speed limit, right? That's yep. the condition. So the prob- it's, it's, oh, okay. I see it's conditional because the probability of getting um, a speeding ticket given um, probably B given A, right? That's what oh, it is. Given okay. a, yeah. So given that they're driving 10 miles an hour, there's like a, you know, there's a 0.73 probability. So it's like, so it's the probability of getting a speeding ticket given that you drive 10 miles per hour over the speed limit yeah is 73 yeah. percent okay yeah, yeah I, I see it. Yeah. yeah these are good actually uh, um by, by the way i just wanted to point out that i did a quick search through the book and they don't actually define marginal they just start using it so i know yeah no actually no on page um <laughs> yeah page that, 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 that's what annoyed me and i was like i <laughs> yeah there, there I is a bold love. though and it says right under the normalizing constants and it says um uh the marginal probability of observing exclamation points across all news articles, right? So fake and yeah. real, right? So basically what you're saying is, is let's just hold the type of news article constant and just look at, hey, how, how many ex- exclamation points are there? That would be, yeah. Okay, so 20% of residents drive 10, okay, above the speed limit. What is this? That's a marginal. That's yeah. marginal, right? Because we're like, we're, hold, we're, we're, we're just saying, you know, give me, you know, across all kinds of, you know, values of, of A or whatever, it's, this is what we would expect to see. Yeah. Like, this is like a filter this is, operation. Sometimes. sometimes this is referred to as, as like a main effect, right? So let's say we have, you know, average, you know, speeding, um, you know, that someone attains and there's a bunch of other variables but we just want to look at the main effect for this controlling for all those other things that to me it seems like um marginal 15 percent of residents have used r um that be joint yeah i think it's just i think it's just marginal again because it's not like half used there's only one thing there's only one thing talked about there right r it's just p of but there's all no but they're also talking about residents well i don't know that's another thing is like well i mean in some sense everything's are. conditional right it's always conditional yeah. Some yeah, other, yeah, yeah, yeah. no some other hypothesis like conditional yeah. given that we're on the planet earth but or given that yeah is it yeah what does it mean by resident here a uh, fictional town yeah so all, about yeah. Like medical residents. So the, the resident is all of the is background everybody's a resident so i would say it's marginal obviously it's conditional on being a resident but that's everything's conditional if you're going to say yeah, that yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, this next one is good though. So, okay, so 91% of statistics students at the local college have used R. Okay. Um, would that now, would that be joint? That's joint. That's got to be joint, right? Because it's like it's about being students at a particular kind of college. I disagree. Yeah. I say it's conditional again because we're saying um, given that you're a statistics student, what's the um, proportion that you use R? And that'd be 91%, right? Is, yeah. So you're saying okay, P no, of I... P of D given C, not not P of D and C, which would be what percentage of people are statistics students that you also use R. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's, I, yeah, I'll go with that. What about okay? So one of these next two has to be with joint. <laughs> and and, be, and because I think it's because it's Prince that it's like I'm really like I'm really like I feel like we got to nail this, but I'm yeah. Um, thirty percent of residents are Minnesotans that like the music of Prince. That's joint, in my opinion. Why? I, I'm just curious. Yeah, because I'm I, so like the reason why I'm asking is like, I was kind of sure that D was joint. And I guess I still trying to understand like why you think that one's conditional. Because I agree that E is joint. I guess I'm just curious. Like, yeah, so E, is, e, e is, con, is, is joint and then the F is um, um, uh, uh, marginal, yes. Conditional, I say. Yeah, because given that you're a resident from that you're a Minnesotan, you like the Prince ninety eight percent, right? In fact, they can't it can't be joint because the other one's um, joint, right? I mean, E is joint. That's that's conditional. That's the difference between the the conditional and the joint, right there. And E and F are good to compare, right? Because in E, or sorry, let's go to F. F, You're saying that what fraction of all the people are Minnesotan and like the music of Prince? Well, that's uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I said that wrong. 
Starting with E, right? What fraction of, of the people are both Minnesotan and they like Prince? Well, it's 38%. But then you can say, okay, given given that they are Minnesotan, what's probably like Prince? That's 95%. That's the condition. That's conditional, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because we're also starting with a subset, right? We're saying... Oh, it's really uh, bad to wear this whole residence thing. It keeps Because you're like, residence? Yeah. Oh, Minnesota? No. It's a fictional town. Some of them are Minnesotan or not. Like, well, how could they not be Minnesotan if they're living in the town? I, I just couldn't <laughs> figure that and, out. And, and, and I guess some yeah, of them are Im immigrants or something. I don't know, from another state. But <laughs> so there's a bunch of non-Minnesotan residents yeah, in, the, in E. And in... Yeah. And in um... yeah, there is. Right. That Yeah. Yeah. No, not E, but there's a bunch in the complement of E anyway. And then I guess then for D, because it would then be, because right, we said that that's conditional, it would be what the probability that you have used are given that you're a statistics student at this local college in this weird fictional town is 91%. I would say like D and F seem like they are structurally the same because you're talking about a specific group and what they do and not in relationship so it's almost like is it possible well no um i gotta think about these more right. here's, here's another way to think about i mean this will help i i just i don't know i'm gonna start talking and i hope it, what's in my head comes out properly but in e right we're saying okay of all the residents Take the whole the residents. Let's say like there's a hundred of them. Let's just say there's only hundred residents, right? Mm -hmm. um, which of those residents are both Minnesotans and they like Prince? Well, there's thirty eight of them. I can say, okay, that one right there, that guy, you're Minnesotan. Yep, I also like Prince. Yep, I do. Okay, you're one of my thirty eight. See what I mean? All right. Now in F, I'm saying, okay, for all you guys that aren't Minnesotans, get out of here. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Right? <laughs> just give me the Minnesotans. Okay, all you Minnesotans, which ones do you guys like, Prince? Oh, almost all of you guys do. Okay, except for like you know five percent. Yeah. That's the way to think about it, maybe did that help uh, i don't know that, help, that helped me yeah. Think about it. yeah yeah i mean like you know, we're, we're saying like we're, we're we're making minnesotans a variable as, as opposed to a constant in e. yeah whereas yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's one way to think about it so you know minnesotans yes or no and liking prince yes or no or those are our two yeah so in, in e the do, denominator yeah another way to look at it in e the denominator includes not not the new but the denominator of that probability includes a bunch of non minnesotans and Includes non. well, including and people that don't like Prince. Also, people that are Minnesotans but don't like Prince, or people that like Prince exactly. but aren't right. All those who are in the four, denominator. There's four groupings, right? There's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, in, I, in F, there's no non-Minnesotans in the denominator. They're all gone. We kicked them out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I actually like that a lot more. Yeah, actually, I that I think is sticking a bit more in my head. Yeah. 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 Well, I won't, this, I won't get into the binomial stuff because that's I, the variable. I have, yeah, I, have I gotta run, but so okay, this cool. Great. This yeah, great. So, very so, oh, this, is, this is very helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I uh, will be in. I will run the um, the spot next time, and then one of you will will figure out chapter. I think hopefully we'll be ready for chapter three and more. Yeah, in, we will uh, be ready in for couple, sure. Yeah, couple of weeks, but um. Yeah, great, great, uh, great uh, talk, and I will see you all uh, next week. Next week, all right, yeah. great. Thank and, you. Uh, Appreciate take it. Care, take care, guys. Take Hi, care. everyone. Have a good one. Right. Bye.